May 31st, 2013, from the stylish high-tech above-ground studios of Ribbit Media in Providence, Rhode Island, this is News on Days. For May 31st, 2013, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Richard Branson in drag. Oh, dear. Ariel Castro to plead not guilty. Is he going for the she was asking for it defense? Tornadoes in Tornado Alley. Couldn't be God's fault. South Carolina hostile to electric cars and other sensible things. That excruciating agony means it's working. Michael Lowe of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, has filed suit against the manufacturer of a personal lubricant. He alleges that the product caused him excruciating pain and permanent scarring and disfigurement of the penis, permanent loss of sensation in the penis, permanent loss of functioning of the penis, permanent nerve damage to the penis, permanent tissue damage to the penis, and the inability to ejaculate, end quote. Is this a bad time for a dick joke? New Florida law reduces neighborliness of Florida neighbors. That should simplify things. Minnesota Representative Michelle Bachman has stated she will not be running to keep her House seat in 2014. That's the first smart thing I've heard of her doing or saying. Ever. Here's hoping this is the sharp end of a trend. Dear Wolf Blitzer, you stand a better than one in six chance of interviewing a non-believer, even in a tornado zone. Writer of the popular and irreverent web show Bible Answers, Nick Green, has reported that he is going to be a father. While details are incomplete at this time, there is speculation that there is, this may possibly involve a female and possibly a child. We will be following this story as it develops. CNN headline, Oregon woman goes missing on Hawaiian trip. Given the choice, wouldn't you? As if dining at Amy's Baking Company, getting racially profiled, and being shot in the head isn't enough reason to not move to Arizona, I give you Arizona State Bill SB 1178. How is it that the dollar gets stronger and the yen gets weaker and prices seem to do nothing but go up? Here's Paul Torville to explain your money. In a modern developed economy, currency is merely little bits of something which have little or no intrinsic value, but which we all agree represents some amount of purchasing power. It used to be that currency itself was valuable, or was guaranteed to be exchangeable for something of intrinsic value such as gold or silver. Now, most industrialized economies have disconnected their currency from any single commodity and let their currencies float. Floating currencies are also called fiat currencies because they are simply defined into existence. Figuring out what a dollar is worth now is no easy thing, because if you pin the value of the dollar to any single commodity, say home heating oil, the dollar is obscenely strong and getting stronger. This is because home heating oil is a consumable commodity whose supply is known to be limited, but we don't know what that limit is. If you pin it to, say, computing power, you'll be sad. The number of available teraflops in America or in the world is enormous and growing exponentially. As a result, the intrinsic value of a teraflop of computing power falls as the supply and ease of acquisition increase. The real way most modern fiat currencies are valued involves runestones, chicken bones, and tarot cards. Not really, but it might as well. I'm Paul Torville, and this was Your Money. Good to know. Stick around. Up next, is that wind? Pesky academic freedom. And is the Pope a closet atheist? Soot. You've been hearing a lot of not-so-nice things about soot. Mostly from tree-hugging, dirt-worshipping pansy liberals and people who think breathing is important. They will talk the ears off your head, droning on and on about wind and solar and renewable energy. What they don't tell you is that soot built America. 
Our modern post-industrial society owes everything to soot. If it wasn't for coal-fired power and diesel-powered transportation, America would grind to a halt. That's a fact. And as long as we have anything to say about it, and as long as there's profit to be made in government subsidies on soot, we're going to do everything we can to keep it that way. We're America's soot industry. Profitable, ugly, traditional, American. Amanda Bynes. Moore, Oklahoma experienced an EF5 tornado not long ago, which ripped the town to shreds. Of course, Oklahoma is where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. It's also dead center in Tornado Alley. Religious folks in the area were quick to thank their supposedly omnipotent gods for saving them, or their pets, or that album of embarrassing church retreat photos, but not so quick to blame their gods for the storm in the first place. Their gods, who, in other situations, they say can create universes and life, stop the sun in the sky, cause it to rain for 40 days straight, and really, you know, runs the whole universe from the tiniest fundamental particle to the largest supercluster of galaxies. No, this storm was caused by the weather. It was just nature, which, as I recall com correctly, uh, is completely under the control of um, these gods. Following the storm... As is often the case, politicians from the local dog catcher to the president of the United States were shoving one another aside to pray for something, forgiveness, please don't do this again, consolation, whatever. The state's two Republican senators, after having opposed aid to states impacted by Superstorm Sandy, were quick to line up for money to rebuild after this most recent twister. Oklahoma Senators James Inhofe and Tom Coburn wasted little time in rising to declare this incident a disaster worthy of federal aid. And I'm sorry, what was that about the Nevermind? What stood out in this particular event was Wolf Blitzer, surprisingly enough, a Jew, asking Moore resident Rebecca Witsum whether she thanks the Lord for her split-second decision to leave her house and find other shelter. Apparently, Blitzer assumed she's a Christian, just like he isn't. Witsum took the opportunity to report that she's an atheist, as you may have heard. It's been all over to interwebs. So, now the mainstream news media is shilling for God? I mean, sure, Fox, but every family has at least one religious wacko. Fortunately, atheist comedian Doug Stanhope started an Indiegogo campaign to help Witsum out called Atheists Unite. So far, the campaign has raised more than $100,000, well above the $50,000 goal, and the campaign has over 50 days left to raise money. Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana, has recently become the center of a controversy regarding a concept called academic freedom. A physics professor at Ball State, Eric Heaton, has come under fire for his course called The Boundaries of Science. This course is generously peppered with Discovery Institute drivel from the likes of Michael Behe. Should academic freedom permit professors in science fields to teach material which fails to stand up to the normal scrutiny of the field? Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Of course they should. Science is about accepting pronouncements from authorities. And what better authority than God? Amen! What? Science is exactly not about pronouncements from authority. Science is about investigating natural phenomena, establishing a hypothesis to explain the phenomena, and then testing the validity of the hypotheses through experiment and observation. In a history or philosophy class, this sort of thing might be worthy of a provisional acceptance. Basing a so-called science course in pseudo-religious conjecture, at the very least, stretches the intent of academic freedom to near breaking point and makes a laughing stock of a science department which would enable such a course. That's what Pig and Sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. Recently, the Pope made a speech wherein he posited a hypothetical conversation between himself and a notional atheist. In this conversation, after being instructed to be good by the pontiff, the atheist 
says he doesn't believe. The pontiff tells him to do good and we will meet one another there. That's a remarkably open and even-handed remark for a pope. Any pope. I could almost get behind that. Don't worry, I'm not going to rejoin the church or anything. Then the pope's handlers came out and told us atheists are still going to hell. So what? Doing good gets you sent to hell? And the pope will meet us there? Will he have gotten drinks and snacks? Will all the popes be there? No. No, I doubt it. No, not if you have to do good to get in. Stay tuned. Still to come, Rutgers in a rut? Leave me alone! Why won't you love me? And ancient history. You know, yesterday. Have you been injured in an accident or can you pretend to have been? If so, we may be entitled to 40% of any settlement you receive. We're the law offices of Angry, Bitter, Vindictive, and Rosenblatt, and we've spent over half a century profiting from the pain and suffering of people who, in some cases, didn't even know they were suffering or in pain. At Angry, Bitter, Vindictive, and Rosenblatt, our attorneys have the skills and experience necessary to turn almost any activity into billable hours. And that means you can pay us more. Angry, Bitter, Vindictive, and Rosenblatt, specializing in personal injury, family law, product liability claims, and almost any other area where emotion weighs more than evidence. Angry, Bitter, Vindictive, and Rosenblatt, getting richer off your mild discomfort since 1955. Justin Bieber. And now here's Moose Weintraub with a Sports Half Minute. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute. It's a whole half minute of sports. 30 seconds of sports. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute. This is your Sports Half Minute. I'm Moose Weintraub. Rutgers University replaces one allegedly abusive coach with another. That's education! Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. Gordon Ramsay, host of Kitchen Nightmares, walked off the show. Gordon Ramsay has a repu reputation for being a little difficult to deal with, but Amy and Sammy Buzaglo make Ramsay look like a passive, spineless plush toy. Sammy and Amy are just delightful. Amy is clearly the best chef in the observable universe. She'll happily tell you that. Oh, and everyone else is conspiring to bring her down. Wait staff, kitchen helpers, customers, Ramsay. You know, me, apparently, you, the Dalai Lama. Seriously, everyone. I don't know exactly how it came to pass that Amy's skin is so drumhead tight and her nose is so Barbie-esque and all that, but uh, I'll bet she didn't pop out of the womb looking like that. Most disturbing, though, was Amy's non-stop belligerent defensive yammering from behind wild, creepy eyes. And Sammy. What can be said about Sammy? Pick a situation. Think of the right thing to do. Run that through a knot gate. That is Sammy's response. When the situation calls for calm, he's escalating. When compassion is needed, he's dismissive. When customer satisfaction is suffering, he threatens the customers and throws them out. A true businessman. Ramsey walked out, and I don't blame him. Then the show aired. The social media shitstorm was epic. What am I saying? Is epic. You know how some people type in all caps? There's plenty of that. You know how people with persecution complexes blame everyone but themselves for their problems? Loads of that. Have you ever seen someone charge with reckless abandon down the God is on our side and we will prevail path? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can remember a few cases of that. Just a few. I seem to recall the Nazis had a motto something like that. Please remember, <clears throat> I'm not saying Amy or Sammy is Hitler. I'm saying there are some interesting parallels. Shall we count them down? Number one, self-described artist. Number two, not a good artist. Three, wild-eyed paranoiac. Four, believes God is on their side. Five, invaded Poland. What? Ah, Amy and Sammy have not invaded Poland. Yet. 
And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? Papua New Guinea is not exactly one of the most culturally or technologically advanced cultures, yet for its land area and population it produces buckets of copper ore, gold dust, crude oils from palm bituminous and petroleum sources, and, um, poles treated or painted with preservatives. That seems a little random. Papua New Guinea also has a long history of uh, unique tribal religious traditions. Some of these involve cannibalism, headhunting, and head shrinking. Sweet. Also, a belief in witchcraft and black magic. Of course, this is the 21st century. Nobody really believes in that stuff now. Oh, wait. Yes, they do. Granted, this is not in the cosmopolitan capital city of Port Moresby or in the next largest city, Ley. Population 72,000. No, this is out in the suburbs. Well, yeah, so accusations of witchcraft, trials, convictions, and, oh yes, punishment. Delivered with a machete. Now, you might think Papua New Guinea is just some backward South Pacific island. Well, it is, sort of, but it's also a unitary parliamentary democracy under the constitutional monarchy that we all know as Great Britain. Yes, Papua New Guinea is a member of the British Commonwealth. Now, I would have thought the Queen of England would have some power to do something about this, seeing as how she's, you know, the Queen of England and everything, the very monarch that supersedes the power of the Parliament. But no, turns out she's no more powerful than the Pope. Surprise, surprise. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, you can submit your story tips online at newsundies.com. News Undies is a weekly show. We'll be back on Friday, June 7th with fresh undies. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, ignore us on MySpace, tell your friends, and buy News Undies Kitsch. Thanks for watching. For all of us here at News Undies, until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be lamenting Michelle Bachman's decision not to run again in 2014.